So another training Thursday for you, and this week we'll be looking at the Worcester Green Star Junior, very popular baller in the UK. We'll be doing a full strip down service on it, taking it all apart, putting it all back together. We're going to be placing a couple of parts in there. So yeah, hopefully this will help you out. Now, this is a new thing that I've started. Hopefully, as time goes on, I'll be able to build up a good folder of different boilers, different work, stuff like that. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. Something might come up that help you out in the future. If you've got any questions, drop them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. Make sure you like the video and yeah, let's take a look at the Worcester Green Star Junior. So it is a Worcester RI. We're doing a full strip clean on this one. I'll show you how to do it. So first off, there's two screws there. You just undo them on top. There'll be a screw there, a screw there. Then you should be able to pull the case out and that'll just come off. As you can see on this one, the flow elbow has gone. So I'll be showing you how to do that as well. It's been leaking a while, but yeah, let's get the um, the fan out of the way. So first thing to do is clip here on the gas valve. We're gonna pull that out, and then the gas pipe it can be a bit tight, but pull that out. And the electrics it can be tight as well. You might have to stick your tongue out. Sometimes I have to get grips on them, but yeah, you just pull them out, pull the earth lead off there. The electric's off, gas pipe disconnected. It's a 13 mil nut on top, just get a 13 mil spanner. I'm just gonna take that off. Once you've got that nut off, the whole assembly will just twist, and you'll see it will unlock from here. Just like that. Then you can lift up. There you go. That's the fan assembly out. Next up is these electrode leads. Now these can be a bit tight. Very tight. There you go. Got that one off. These two. Um, yeah. Now you can wiggle them just to see if they not loosen up. But they can be very tight, them can, to get off. So make sure you're off in the end, but this one I had to break off. So if you're struggling to get them leads off, just get a flathead and a hammer and just put it on there and just break it off. But near them amount, what you can do is lift that plane and that'll come out. And I'll expose the electrodes. Oh my god, they're metal. There we go. And then I'll just come out. We are replacing them it's part of full strip of clay, but you can see this gasky. Yeah, nothing left to be common problem on these Worcesters. Always check these. We do is on a basic service, run your analyzer around it. You might get some readings, but yeah, let's get this old gasket out. And that, you just pull that out. And it'll just slide out of there. He says, there we go. That's the burn out. Now the first baffle, nice and easy to put your hand in. And that'll just come out. That's gonna need a good clean. And the second one, a little bit trickier. But let me show you how to do it. So to get the other baffle out, on top of here is a screw. I'll just tuck that out and this plate will come out. See if I can line it up here so you can see. There's a baffle right in there. So what you gotta do is get a tool in there to pull it out. And this is the Buster tool that they give you. So yeah, I'm gonna fish that in there now and try and get it out. So you should fish it in through the top and you should be able to, it can be a bit tight. There we go. You just fish it out and that's the bottom buffalo. Not gonna lie, that come out first time. Normally I'm struggling a little bit with them. Sometimes I can make it dead easy like that one or they can be an absolute pain but that one come out nice and easy. So. Let's give it a good clean out now. So enough tool you need is the Worcester cleaning brush. It just looks like a bog brush basically. So you just feed it in from the top, then you can twist it and it will clean the heat exchanger. So down it goes, I'm just gonna twist it round, give it a really good clean out in there, try and loosen up all the deposits. That Worcester brush is, it's okay. It's okay, it, it gets in there and cleans a bit, but it don't really do the full job. Now you can just get a drill, pour some water down, but let me show you what I use. I invested in this tool and it's sped up my full services and services load. This will clean this out really good. Of course, it's the 
Carter mini pressure washer. Now it's about four litre tank on top. So what we're going to do now is spray all that water down inside the heat exchanger. Let me just show you what it looks like before. Not, not too bad. Not too bad. The reason I'm doing force to clean this is because I'm replacing the gasket. Customers just moved in, they've done the last time it's done. So let's start from scratch, force to clean. So yeah, I'm gonna get the cartridge in there now, give it a good blast through. Yeah, that should uh, that should clean that out in about five minutes if that point. Let's show you the trap before I start cleaning so you can see. There's nothing in there. Uh, to get this panel off, it's dead simple. There's two screws either side, just undo them. That'll pull out, and there's two hooks actually there and there. And that will hold there while you do your maintenance work. So yeah, let's give this a wash through. All right, so that's all been blasted through. Let's see the difference. It's a lot cleaner. Uh, there's a little bit I've missed there. I can get back in the pressure washer now. I can see where I've missed. Uh, yeah. Yeah, overall, that's done pretty well. I mean, that's the, that's the trap. Um, take into account that obviously it's been washing some of this muck through. Uh, you can see it's got a bit out there. But yeah, that uh, mini pressure washer just speeds up full stripping cleans. Still charge the same from a full stripping cleans as what I used to without the mini pressure washer. But now I've got the mini pressure washer, it does take a lot less, a lot less to do full stripping cleans, but it's an investment. I mean, it was over hundred pound that was. Um, so yeah, it's a good investment. I mean, it's blasted through that. I think we're going to get some good fan pressures off that now. But yeah, let's um, start putting it all back together. So the pressure washer again is great for cleaning the baffles out. Now the spring one, that's actually designed so you can pull the spring and just snap it shut so it'll clean all the individual springs on here. But yeah, it's been a nice job cleaning them baffles up as well. So we're going to be fitting new electrodes. This is the booster part number if you ever need it. It comes with the instructions, electrodes, gasket and this this is something that was changed on these electrodes tells you there how to fit them so electrodes go in through the gasket then that goes on the other side because that was the main point of failure that's why they've introduced this plate it's like a heat shield plate which will go on there so let's put these electrodes together then we can get them in there we go they'll look something like that once them all through and they'll sit on top now i have i've actually come across one of these before where the engineer put it on this side instead of that side it has to go on the gasket side that little plate does yeah and then we're ready to go in there right let's put the baffles in so come on first don't get these mixed up so we'll never get the the other one back out so that one drops in yeah it's gone all the way down and your pepper pot I'll call that a pepper pot get him in and just go clean the burner and get him back in yeah the burner just go put that in the back same way it came out and you'll see there's like these hooks so I'll line them up with the hole so the small one just goes in there and you want it flat you see it's kinked up at the back there you go nice and flat now that's ready to accept the new gasket and electrodes new gaskets and electrodes just go into their spots just at the back there there we go and you see this hole here that goes hooks over just there and that's all on there ready to go now that hole there that was for if there's a side glass here you don't really see them anymore but that's all that back in and next up is this plate so this plate hooks over the electrons there and then comes down to there now be careful not to snap that bit off there so i've had it for where uh, that clip is underneath there push it down and it's snap clip it's all ready now for the fan to get back on. Oh, get these back on first. These means you put on now, then they would be once everything's back in place. So, just gonna get them back on. So, onto the fan, getting that back in. You can see the plate, we've left that loose. We've lined up the fan here and put the torch on. So, we've lined it up here in the groove. Now, what you need to do is just lift it up slightly, line up the groove, then push, and it will whisk in. It's locked in then. And you can get your back on there, and that's all that back in. And take it back out. Now, the reason I've took it back out is just for I've got to do this flow elbow, so it's going to be easier to do that with that fan out of the way. So, because it's an open venting system, you have to bung the system. So, let's go and do that. 
Right, so I'm putting the loft, found the edit tank. That is actually quite good access, to be fair. Light water above you, happy days. So it's a bunga tank. You just put a bunga just over the open vent. And you see this pipe down here? That's the feed pipe. What I've got to do now is stick my arm down there. Bung that into the feed pipe. Which is always nice because it ain't the best water. But yeah, you just pop the bung in that pipe and that'll airlock the system. So we've got the system bung now, but what we're going to do is drain it off now. There's a, bleed, there's a drain point on the water stairs, you just use a bleed key, get into there, and you see it's got a little bit of water out. We're going to now, half of this one will look, but that pin will come out. It will come out. That pin will come out, and you should be able to pull that off. These can be a bit tight, so what you can actually do is get your flatters behind it and Prize it out. I'm gonna need two hands because I just want to support it here just while I push on there. But that will help you get it out. That's near enough off. There we go. Big lug. Big lug. Probably better off it's closing that drain point now just so it keeps the vacuum on here. So we managed to get it off. What we did with our flow elbow was twist it and just keep moving it just to loosen up the R ring. Hold on to that pipe and pull it off. Two other rings on there, one there, one there. Let's get them off. Yeah, and get that replaced. So new ring, our rings on there. Plenty of silicon grease on there. And it does come with the clips so Let's just pop them clips out. And we just pull out on them. And we can get that onto there. Then onto then onto the exchange. That flower valve was in. What I normally do is just give it a pull just to make sure it's on. Then we can twist that onto there. Got the clip out, push it on, can be a bit tight, push it in, clip through. Yeah, I'm just gonna have to line that up a bit more and get that clip on in while we're going through. Let me just use two hands, hold on. There we go. That is fully home now, so I'll give that a pull. Yeah, that's fully on. Make sure that that's closed. And that's it, that's the flow elbow all done. You can see in the cookie, that's all the water we lost. Very, very minimal. Now, if I did hear a big plug off that, or the water start coming out, just lock up your holes, lock up your holes. I've got to put my thumb over that one, thumb over that one, till it stopped plugging, then it will get the air lock again. Um, but yeah, if you can learn how to plug the system, it'll save you a lot of time. It's probably saved me about an hour and a half of my time, drained down, filling up. Now that's all done, let's get the fan in. Back in loft, take the bungs out. Now, when you take the bungs out, don't take the open vent out first, it'll just suck in a load of air. You want to take out your bottom bung, if I can reach it. Bottom bung is out. And you can take that one out. There we go. And it won't suck in any air. That's it, so system bung, that'll just fill up that bit of water that we lost. As long as I put that on right, other than that, I'm flooding the border downstairs. Just as a reference for the flow elbow, that's the Worcester part number that you need. So we're back to where we was before I realised that's changed this. So I'll just put that nut back on, tighten it back down, and the gas pipe is going to get that back into there. Give it a pull down. And you know, and that's in because the clip will go straight through. And you can pull that off just to make sure it's all in. Clips line back up, just push it through. There you go. And then just give that a pull just to make sure it ain't coming out. And we can get the electrics back on. Which I've lost behind here. Hold on. I've got an out. So fan electrical switch back on. Earthly back on. That's it. All stripped and clean. Just gonna take the contact trap out now just to get rid of them debris in there. So I'll just undo this knot. There we go, don't lose that washer. We have got spares on the van just in case, but don't lose that. Then can be very brittle as well, so be careful. And you just undo the two screws there. there you go. And two screws out, there's a screw just there. Just undo that. Once that screw's out, pull that. And the trap will just slide out. There we go, we can go and clean that now. Just get rid of all that muck in there. That's all clean now, just line it up, push it home. And we can put that clamp back on and slide that across. And in. There we go, not tightened up, two screws in, that's the backing position. Let's get rid of that drain off. And now we can just pop that back on, and two lugs there, and put these two screws back in. 
that's full strip clean all done what i'm going to show you now is how to get this into service mode uh, the fan pressure test and all the checks that you need to do so to get this into service mode there's three screws on this front plate one there one there and one just underneath there under them and this will come off now the compartments behind it will be live so be careful in the back of there you see that you want to take that out and actually goes into there so we can do now you have to be careful because like i said this is going to be live when you do it but you can just turn that and that'll get into high and low all right let's get my telegraph set up get some tests done okay so what you want to do is make a central heating demand i'm just going to pop the board on It's the fault. Hold on. Just reset that. Hmm. Oh, that's in a fault card. Right, reset to there. Back up. There we go. Right, so now the fan started. You can see that's a uh, flight like that is in normal mode. We turn it to the one turn, just the one turn, that point to maximum. Second turn, put it down into minimum. You'll see the sequence of the lights change. Is that ramping down now to minimum? The light sequence is too flashing for the minimum. I'll just give that a quick turn. You'll see the lights change then. So there's five lights flashing for maximum. To get it back into normal, just twist it again. And that's in normal. So I'm going to put that on maximum now and test the fan pressure. So you see, we've got that in maximum now. And that's the fan pressure we've got. Minus 8.3. And that is the Worcester Green Star 18 RI. So what I'll do next screen, you'll see what the fan pressure should be for each Worcester RI and the Worcester Junior, because it's the same boiler basically. So I'll put the fan pressures up for you. I've got the 28i and 24i Junior and natural gas and LPG is what the fan pressure should be. And this is the RI, all the different models in natural gas and LPG. So excuse the noise from me, I'm live. We can see we've got that in minimum. These are the rooms we're getting on minimum. Now we've got the boiler in maximum. This is what the maximum is giving us. Again, next screen, I'll show you what we should be getting for each green style junior, the ROI and the combi version. Starting with the 24 and 28 i junior again, in the instruction to tell you how to adjust the gas valve, but then with the readings that you should get for minimum and maximum on the right. And if we will look at the ROI, same again, shows you how to do the minimum and maximum and gives you the readings that you should be getting on minimum and maximum. Make sure you put the cap back on the fan pressure test point. I'm just going to put this back into normal mode. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to turn that down to minimum, just while I put all this back together and I'll do a final reading with it on max, with the case on. So with the case, when you get back on, it actually lines up, the runner here lines up with here. You can see I've got on both sides and that will just push back now. You want to make sure that goes all the way back and you just tighten up these two screws here. I always do the bottom ones first. So bottom ones have been what you did now. It's up to the top. Two screws. Just go in there and that's the case back on and we can do our final test readings. See so, yeah, I'm just letting this eating run to see something. All my checks now I've done a uh, gas freight tightness test, which is a landlord's check. Uh flu integrity is from that cap there. FSD, turn off stop cap. I'm not gonna teach you how to suck eggs, that's all your basic gas training. But, yeah, last the important touch is stickers. Sticker there, sticker there, with my number on, with the service date, it's this time next year. When it's due, they'll give me a call back, and that is a full strip clean on a Worcester boiler. So there we have it, the Worcester Green Star Junior. That's full strip down service, head bunk system, and head to that flow elbow. So I hope that has helped you out. And so if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, because there might be something coming up in the future that I'll do that will help you out. And also, with the fold that I'm building, with the training Thursdays, you can refer back to it if you ever get one of these jobs in the future. It might help you out. I'll say thank you again for your support. Really, really appreciate it. Catch you on the next one.